Uh, hello once again, this is Reflex. Uh, thanks for watching my videos. If this is the first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also turn on the notification icon to stay updated about my latest video. Please do subscribe to my channel. Subscription is free, it doesn't cost you a thing for you to subscribe. So this is the picture we are going to be making use of right now. So we're going to be manipulating the picture background. So firstly, before we start that, let me walk you through the steps you need to get, the step you need to do for you to get a nice outcome when it comes to manipulation. So firstly, our step is background extension, which is background extension, extension. Why our step two is our background remover, removing of backgrounds. That's our step two, background remover, which is the most important aspect of this uh, manipulation of a thing. Uh, if your background is not well removed, you won't have a nice outcome when it comes to your manipulation. So our uh, next step is background remover. Background remover. Why the third step is uh, blemish remover when it comes in terms of the background? Because not all the time uh, our background come out smooth. Sometimes we have some blemishes, we have some rough, we have some patches there. So the next step is just cleaning up, clean up blemishes from the background. Cleaning up blemishes. Or blemishes. From the background. Which our next step after that is we object placing. This is also a crucial part when it comes to the manipulation aspect. You need to know how to place your objects uh, that will make it lap, to make it look realistic as if you took the picture there, not as if you drag something from uh, another picture to the picture. It will seem as if you snap the picture there using the actual background you are making use of. So these are steps you need to consider while creating a background manipulation so that your picture will come out nice and people will love it. So the next is our object placements object placement why our last part is our color grading color grading you see why applying manipulation of picture you importing backgrounds importing objects the object you are importing comes its own background so you placing the object now in your own picture now you need a color to harmonize everything together to make it look real a color that will make everything blend together it will look as if yeah you are taking the picture in that actual place so you have to color grade it you can either use your color grading loops you can use your presets and you can use your selective color D, you can also use your camera roll no matter how you know how to small uh, you know how to color grade uh all my files are for sale there are links below for you to make purchase there and i'll be also i'll be dropping some ones for you guys to make use of for this particular video but if you want to get the premium file, you can just go to my store, the link is in the description and you can decide to buy any pack you want, you can decide to buy the presets, the lot, anyone you need to buy uh, from my store. But I'll be dropping the one I'll be using for this particular one for free for you guys to use. And also if you want me to be uh, doing background manipulations for you for your studio picture, uh, you can place an order uh, I'm on Fiverr so you can just actually go there and I'll make another day and I'll work on your pictures for you so firstly I talk about background extension this is the, this is the size of the picture background and we love to extend the background as of now so there are so many ways I do my background uh, extension so let me just click on ctrl J because when I start working on my photoshop I don't love working with my background layer so I love my background layer to remain intact in case I make any error I can easily go back and duplicate the background layer again then start my work from scratch once again so i'll duplicate that by clicking on ctrl j then i'll pick my rectangle mark quick two over here so i'll drag over here then i'll click on ctrl t for free transfer then hold down my shift key then drag it up as you can see then once i'm done i'll click on my ctrl d to deselect as you can see it's looking realistic it doesn't seem as if we did anything there it seems as if the background is already there so we'll do that to the four areas of the picture we'll do that to the left to the right hand side also and also to the floor of the picture 
so i'll come to this side also i'll do the same thing here but while you're doing that make sure your uh, selection is not touching your model because if you have to touch your model it's also going to be dragging your model along uh, with the background so pay attention to that also ctrl c for free transform hold down your shift key then drag to the right also drag it then click ok select go to the left hand side also same thing click on ctrl c shift key drag also as you can see it's looking all that realistic enough as if the the background is that wide without knowing that we we the one that did the background on our own so let's do the last part now which is down so i'm also going to be selecting it so i'll just make sure it doesn't touch my model then ctrl c for free transform hold on my shift key then i'll drag zoom out so i'm going to drag it perfectly I'll drag it. I'll drag it. And see, I'm no longer seeing the white line. Okay, I think we're done with that. Ctrl D to the select. So we are done with the first step, which is the background extension. So you can decide to extend it more so you see fix. So that's the first aspect for now. So the next aspect now is our, our background removal. So we'll be removing the picture from the background. Um, I'm not going to be doing that in this particular tutorial, but you can watch the previous, the previous tutorial on background manipulation. I did uh, all the background over there. Right now, I already removed my background. Let me show you that. As you can see, this is my object layer. I already removed it from the background perfectly. So let me turn it back on now. So we are going to jump to the next step, which is the third step, uh, which is the blemishes, uh, blemish remover. So as you can see right now, when when I drag this down now, this downside, as you can see right now, it's showing some black, some shadows that are here before, and also these are tones on the background. So I'm going to be cleaning all that right now. So right now, we're using my pack to to clean the background to remove blemishes from it. So I pick my patch to over here. So I'm going to circle around the area I want to area I want to clean. We are currently looking at our background layer, so I'll sample the area I want to clean and I'll drag it to the area I want to fade the color with. As you can see, so I'll do the same thing here also. Then I'll drag to the area I want to fill it with. Ctrl D to the side select. I'll do the same thing here also. Just to make sure I remove the blemishes perfectly. Same here, drag. Same here, drag. So we're just cleaning the blemishes. We can still leave the shadow the way it is right now. So let's clean it a little bit more again. So as you can see right now, it's still way better than before. It's still way better than before. So we're done with the step for now. So now let's move in the background. We still have some rough uh, side over here. So how are we going to do that? Uh, we are going to use our fill color right now. So I'll just go to my cover adjustment layer over here. Cover adjustment layer. Go to solid color. Uh, firstly, let's sample the color we want to fill into the background. So let's pick our color picker. Click on color picker over here. Then we sample the color. So this is the color we want to make use of now. So once we just go to our cover adjustment, click on our solid color, as you can see automatically it's going to fill in the color for us. But right now it has filled the colors for us, but uh, the shadow is are no longer there. So it's looking as if we place the picture on the background. So we are going to amend that right now. So I'm going to click on this my clipping my layer max over here. Once I click on it, then I'll click on my gradient. Make sure your gradient is on black and white to color black and white so i'm going to drag over the area i don't want the colors to the uh solid color to be as you can see right now it has brought back our shadows for us so as you can see so i'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit Wow, I think we have something nice now. So we are done with the that step for now. So this is one of the most important steps also 
which is where we bring in our backgrounds and then we blend our background in to make it look perfect so what i said earlier on object placement matters a lot if you are to drag in a background and it doesn't lap uh with what you want to use it for it won't make sense it won't look realistic enough so that's not what we want to do we want everything we are doing to look realistic so let's start with one background first we are going to be making it of two to three backgrounds right now so let's start with the one which which contains the food from head to toe so i'm going to be making use of this one i'll drag into my photoshop drop wait for it to load once it does as you can see it is not filling every where i want it to be so i'm going to extend it until it contains everywhere i want it to be okay let me drop it this way so as you can see right now we still have some space left here so we are going to amend that firstly we rasterize the image you just brought now rasterize layer then we'll click on our rectangle marker tool then select the area we want to we want to extend this background again the one we just brought in right now so click on ctrl t put on our sheet key bring it down bring it down bring it down so click on ctrl d to select so now i think the background is looking a little bit okay right now than before so next thing now it's still looking not that realistic because our shadows are not there we don't have the shadows anymore so we are going to change the blend mode again from normal to soft light as you can see right now we've changed the background to soft light which is blended in perfectly so we want to show you the before and the after as you can see right now so that's the first background so we are going to pick our second background let's look for our last overlay that we can add to it we can see any okay let's check out this see if it's going to work fine on it let's check it out let's drag it there drop what we need from this is just we need just this lamp and also uh this other stuff here we don't need uh the foot the footer aspect so we are going to leave it like this so we'll just reduce it a little bit more again reduce okay now change the blend mode also to soft light again too as you can see it's also coming with its own uh, background its own color so we are going to desaturate it also firstly rasterize the layer then control u to reduce saturation master okay so now we are still going to do the same cleaning we did to the rest let's open the, the two background we brought in first so let's clean this off adding our, our layer marks and needs so let's clean it off let's clean it off wow i think this is even better than the first two we added the first two value we added it's looking looking nice let's check this out again i think it's not going on it so we are going to be making use of this overlay alone this and this alone uh, for this particular tutorial so the next step is for we to color grade now so the first color grade i'll be making it of i score andura standard i'm going to be using it to apply more shadows on the picture so go to color lookup low 3 tell lot then go to andura standard click on it as you can see it create more shadows on the picture it make the picture look more real as if the picture was actually taken on the taken there and also the light we just brought in light right now is showing as if the light was there already so that's the first step of the color grading the next one is how to apply the skin color uh, as you can see the color is too much right now so you can as well reduce the opacity or the fill let's reduce the fill a little bit now let's color grade everything together as i said earlier on this is the final aspect well applying an overlay without a color grading lot or you coloring the picture it's not going to come out nice at all at all so it's better you get a color grading lot i have some for sale some of my premium lots for sale they are in the description you can download them there you can buy them i mean to see so as you can see right now this before we color grade the first uh the f this bow use the first color grade uh, color grading lots so now let's try and use the second color grading lots we still go back to our cover adjustment layer again 
this time around back to color lookup then click on our load 3d lots from there we go down go down scroll down then we are going to use our natural color once you click on it boom this is what you got but the color is too much so we are going to be reducing the opacity reduce the opacity till we see if it as you can see we've done the background manipulation so now let me show you before and after group everything together these are before these are after using background manipulation very easy and straightforward to learn so thanks for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe to my youtube channel and also turn on the notification icon if you have any question you can drop your question in the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as possible uh, if you know if you are in need of all these micro grading files you can as well buy them the links in the description below and i promise you guys it's going to be a hell of a file for you to get there so you can as well get either you get a preset to get a loot and overlay or you get the complete pack which is at the discount rate so thanks for watching guys see you guys on my next